Hello everyone and welcome back to Brand by Brand. If you're new to the channel, or perhaps it's just been a bit too long since the last episode, this series aims to take a more in-depth look at each brand from my 2019 Top 10 Favorite Watercolor Brands video. This is in order to build a custom watercolor palette that features unique selections from each brand that we look at while still meeting the needs of a standalone palette. So far, we've taken a look at the deep and textural collection of Daniel Smith, a soft and delicate palette from Schminka, a bold selection of unique colors from Da Vinci, and the glazing friendly colors of Sennelier. Today, we'll be exploring a much newer company from the United States, Core Watercolors by Golden. Core refers to the product as a modern watercolor, which is based on a unique formulation using the proprietary binder called Aquazol rather than a traditional gum arabic. Paired with their own synthetic ox gall, these paints flow with reckless abandon, intensity, and vibrancy. Their line consists of 83 colors and, in my opinion, are best suited for artists who like to work with bold color and don't mind giving up a little bit of control. I wouldn't necessarily recommend them to most beginners due to some of their inherent qualities, but to learn more about my thoughts on them overall, I'll link some video reviews in the description below. While Core might be a little intimidating to newcomers, they do offer my favorite and most detailed online swatches of any commercial brand, which is great in the time of buying everything online. So if you're interested in any of the colors that we talk about today, I recommend checking out their website so you can see how each color reacts to water, how they glaze, etc. This 12 color set was approached a little bit differently than the other sets in this series. As Core can be rather expensive to buy open stock, I started with most of the colors from their six color high chroma set and filled it out to form a well-rounded, albeit bright, color palette. This is the point where I would usually plug the sponsor of today's video, but there isn't one. I know that you guys haven't seen a ton from me here on YouTube this year, but I have still actively been working on my business in the background and decided months ago that I wouldn't be accepting any additional sponsors for the foreseeable future. I really want to get back to doing what I love, which is creating educational and helpful watercolor content that you want to see without forcing deadlines or worrying about how to plug a product, no matter how relevant that product may be. In this series, we're setting out to make limited palettes that suit each brand's unique approach to watercolors, so I did want to take a moment to let you know about additional resources on this topic. If you'd like to learn more about how to create your own watercolor palette tailored exactly to your own needs, as well as how to make a mixing chart like you'll see later in this video, please feel free to check out my class over on Skillshare titled How to Set Up a Custom Watercolor Palette. While I'm not accepting any more sponsorships from the channel, the time that is spent watching my classes over on that other platform do help support me as a working artist. For those who aren't on Skillshare, I also have a segment in a YouTube video for a similar mixing chart that I'll also link in the description below. One last quick note before we jump into today's video is that I recently finished a painting that I am just really dang proud of and I wanted to share it with you here since it wasn't created for a YouTube video. Although it wasn't painted exclusively with core watercolors, it does feature some bright, beautiful colors and I thought it would be worth mentioning in this video. 2020 has not been a year of creativity for me, so it felt especially great to produce this piece. If you want to see how it came together, the entire process was documented over on Patreon and you can gain access to it and every other real-time tutorial that I've posted over there for as little as $5 a month. It's also available as prints and stickers over in my Etsy shop and will be available on zipper pouches soon as well. Thank you all for your patience as we got through these housekeeping announcements and now on to the video. We're going to start things off with a pretty off the wall color. Green gold made from PY129 is not an uncommon color. It's just not usually the color I choose as the only cool yellow on a palette. While this color doesn't offer a pure yellow option, it does make for a passable middle yellow when it's mixed with quinacridone gold and diluted down. In more concentrated washes, it provides a base for really rich browns and beautiful earthy greens.
Our warm yellow for this palette is Quinacridone Gold. It's made from the typical PO48 and PY150 mixture that most brands use as a replacement for the true Quinacridone Golds. In its mass tone, it's a rich yellow brown, but tinted out, it presents as a bright golden yellow. It mixes vivid oranges and warm reds, as well as an array of greens between earthy and surprisingly vibrant. This palette, thanks to the high chroma set, includes an orange in the form of PO71 Transparent Pyrrole Orange. Longtime viewers of the channel know how much I loved Daniel Smith's older version of this color with the same name, but you won't find that really red hue here. This is unmistakably orange. It creates a soft gray when it's mixed with warm blues, heavy granulating greens when mixed with the cobalt teal, and rich olive greens when mixed with sap green. It also neutralizes with Payne's gray to make a really nice neutral black. Moving on to our warm leaning red, we are headed towards a good old palette staple, Pyro Red Medium. I decided to go with a reliable PR254 here because it's a color that I'm comfortable working with and I love the intensity of this version by Core. It mixes a wide array of other reds when added to either oranges or pinks, as well as some of my favorite neutrals on this palette. Due to its warm undertones, it neutralizes beautifully into deep blue grays when mixed with blues, and a nearly perylene green like hue when mixed with phthalo green. If you're only ever going to try one color from Core, I would recommend this next pick with Quinacridone Magenta made from PR122. This magenta is insanely saturated, mixing gorgeous reds, purples, neutrals, and even a bright lovely brown when combined with the green gold. It's a pretty heavy offender of those really weird finger-like blooms that Core is sometimes known for, but boy is that vibrancy worth the trade-off. This color is on my main palette and is my go-to when I need a color in this range. So the next color on this palette was originally slated to be Dioxazine Purple, which was included in the High Chroma set and is a gorgeous version of that color. However, as I sat down to make this video in 2020, another color came to mind, one that I'm sure that my local artist friend, Jenny Granberry, would have words with me over if I didn't include it here. So as an alternative, today I'm offering up Quinacridone Violet made from PV19. I admittedly don't use this color very often myself, but I've seen Jenny use it with beautiful success, so I had to include it here. In this palette, it mixes muted browns and reds, deep violets, and some of my favorite inky darks.
The next color was one that I wasn't sure if I should include, not because of its hue, but because of its current availability. Indian Foam Blue made from PB60 is a dark, warm, beautiful blue that I feel really fits this palette well. It mixes gorgeous greens, teals, violets, and darks. My hesitation to mention it is because it's currently on back order in most shops at this time, and it's unclear when it will be restocked. I don't want to be responsible for panic buying and creating unnecessary demand, so if this is a color that you are interested in from this brand, feel free to search it out. But keep in mind that you can either replace this color within the brand, or you could buy an Indian Throne from another brand if that is available in your area. As with all of my brand by brand videos, I have an entire set of alternate colors to this palette posted over on Patreon if you want to check out some other options. Moving on to our cool blue, we're going to go with a classic phthalo blue green shade made from PB15 colon 3. While this may seem like an uninspired pick, I actually think Core does this color a lot of justice. It mixes beautifully saturated greens across the board, as well as cool purples, dark teals, and some solid dark neutrals. We're back to another color that I hesitate to promote, though for different reasons this time around. Cobalt colors are complicated in terms of finding ethically sourced pigments that don't negatively impact the environment or involve child labor. While there are cobalt mines that exist in the world that don't implement these harmful practices, I haven't found many brands that are willing or maybe able to offer up information on where they source their cobalt colors from. That being said, Cobalt Teal is a color found in the High Chroma set, and it is a really beautiful color to work with. It mixes granulating varieties of vivid greens, muted purples, and soft blues. Core's version is made from PG50. It's ultimately up to you on whether or not you want to purchase this pigment, but it's a unique shade that is hard to replicate. Next up, we have Thalo Green Blue Shade made from PG7. Now, I have to admit that I did a bit of a double take when I swatched this color. For a PG7, it leans really neutral, lying somewhere between the classic blue shade and the yellow shades that I'm used to seeing. Regardless, this color does make some of my favorite dark greens and teals, though I will note that it is a bit more textural than other Thalo Greens that I've worked with from other brands. If you're looking for a smooth phthalo green, then I might not recommend this version, but for those of you who like a bit of texture to your colors, it might be a good reason to pick up a tube. I did want to offer a convenient screen on this pot that otherwise consists of mostly bright in your face colors. Their sap green is made from PG36, PR101, and PY150. It's a unique mixture that I haven't seen replicated in any other brand. It lies somewhere between a traditional sap green and an olive green. Prior to creating Denise's Green with Da Vinci, this was my Daniel Smith Sap Green alternative, though I will note that this version is more granulating than other sap greens. As we did for Sennelier, I'm just gonna skip right over the earth tones. Aside from a couple of niche colors, this just isn't where Core shines. Originally, I wasn't going to have any neutrals either, but I decided at the last minute that I wanted to swap out one of the reds for a Payne's Gray. Over the last year or so, I've come to really value having a convenient dark on my palette. 
Core's version is made from PB15,3, PBK7, and PV19. It leans slightly blue, but is overall a pretty neutral color on its own. You can see those blue undertones come out though when you do mix it with yellows, and across the board it makes gorgeous darks when mixed with just about any other color on this palette. So there you have it my friends, a bright and beautiful palette celebrating Core's strengths as we play with color. It is by far the most vibrant palette that we have looked at so far in the series, and it isn't for the faint of heart. There are so many notable colors in the line depending on what subjects you like to paint, so let us know what some of your favorites are in the comments below. As I mentioned earlier, I have an entire secondary palette of core watercolors up on the Patreon blog to provide additional options if some of these missed the mark for you. If you are looking for additional resources on palette creation, I do hope that you will check out the links in the description below. Thank you to everyone for watching, commenting, liking, and subscribing, and an extra special thanks to my wonderful patrons for their ongoing support. Until next time, my friends, happy painting.